Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on research methods, looking at interpretivism. Interpretivism is a methodological approach that differs from positivism in that it examines the individual interpretations that people have about their social behaviours. It is based upon trying to understand the meanings people give and the motivations people have to act in specific manner in different contexts. Rather than developing a formulaic understanding of society as positivists attempt to do, interpretivists focus on trying to gain an insight into the unique experiences of individuals and groups. Rather than approaching social issues objectively, interpretivists suggest that researchers need to develop empathy, or as Weber stated, Verstehen, with the subjects of the research in order to better understand the social location of these people. One of the key ideas of interpretivism is that society is constructed of individuals and that the decisions and behaviours of these individuals then shape social institutions such as education, family, religion and media. While positivism focuses on structural explanations and tries to develop a one-size-fits-all approach, interpretivism looks at micro-sociology, the meanings that individuals prescribe to events rather than society's meta-narrative. Interpretivists also favour qualitative data that is more subjective because individuals will have their own opinions on events. Finally, interpretivism suggests that due to individuals having free will and being able to act differently, albeit within the confines of social structures, that humans cannot be studied scientifically. Put simply, different people will react in different ways. Interpretivists prefer more qualitative methods of research than positivists. Methods such as observations, either participant or to a lesser extent non-participant, give them a first-hand account of human behaviours. Participant observations also allow researchers to experience the activities of the group, which heightens their understanding of the group's experience. Secondary sources, such as personal and historical documents, also give a greater insight into the lives of others, while the use of surveys focuses on gathering written and verbal accounts of meanings and motivations through open-ended questionnaires and unstructured interviews that allow those being researched a voice. Interpretivist methods have certain strengths. They are higher in validity than positivist methods as they probe deeper than the surface of social facts that positivists prefer. They uncover the meanings and motivations of people's actions, whether this is observed, verbally or in writing. They produce qualitative data which helps researchers to uncover hidden meanings they may not have understood. Typically, researchers are more likely to come from middle class backgrounds and by utilising qualitative data, they have the ability to understand the views of those outside of their social class or ethnic group. Furthermore, they champion the underdog in society, providing a voice to those that often go neglected in other forms of research or in the media. And finally, they can gain an insight into hard to reach groups, as interpretivist research into deviant subcultures and feminist research into the lives of women who are abused and oppressed has demonstrated. Of course, there are limitations to using interpretivist methodology. They're difficult to replicate, particularly methods such as participant observations and unstructured interviews, which means they can lack reliability. Critics will also suggest that too often the researcher can have too much of an influence in, in the research, interpreting actions that will fit in with their theoretical position or the aims of their research. Examples of this are leading questions or over-recording of behaviours that fit in with their hypothesis, Rejecting secondary sources that contradict their findings are possible when used in interpretivist methods. A further limitation is that due to the in-depth nature, their research tends to be small scale and focused on groups that may be seen as atypical. Therefore, it's difficult to generalise interpretivist research to the wider population. Finally, their approach is seen as being unscientific, particularly by the scientific community, as it is not able to be falsified. This means it's often rejected for the purposes of decision and policy making. However, interpretivists would suggest that sociology should be independent of government and that the role of sociology is to act as a commentary on society. Some examples of interpretivist research from across the specification are Willis's Learning to Labour, which utilised a range of interpretivist methods to investigate the experience of education that working class boys had. Jock Young's research into deviancy amplification looked at the process of labelling and cracking down on marijuana users in Notting Hill, leading to further deviance. 
and a range of sociologists have utilised interpretivist methodologies in education. Fuller, Archer, Mack and Guile, to name but a few, examining the impacts of education on different social groups. That concludes this Cheetah to You sociology topic video on research methods focusing on interpretivism. Thanks for watching.